Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss about assembly language. Now, to discuss about assembly language, first of all, we'll be describing the term assembler. Now, assembler is a program which translates the symbolic language notations to the desired binary language equivalent. So, in that case, the program which is written in form of symbols needs to be translated to binary coded form and that task is being performed by the assembler. Now the input program that is symbolic notations are termed as source program and the programs which we are getting as an output that is binary program are termed as object program. Now this program that is assembler program operates onto the character strings and we get the corresponding binary coded decimal equivalent representation. So the thing is the assembler's basic and the main task is to perform the translation operation from symbolic notations to the binary form. So moving further we are supposed to discuss some instructions. Now pseudo instructions are not machine instructions means they are not going to be executed by the processor but rather than these are the instructions which gives the information during the translation operation which is getting carried out during the conversion of assembly language code to the binary code. Now these are the pseudo instructions available with our design of a basic computer in which we are having four instructions starting with ORGN that is origin means hexadecimal number n is the memory location from which our program is to be executed. So we can say that hexadecimal number n is the memory location for the instruction or operand listed in the following line means you can simply say that this is the start of our program. Then next is what is we are having end pseudo instruction means it denotes the end of our assembly language program. Again repeating the point that these are not machine instructions. These are the instructions for the purpose of translation. Next we are having is DECN means signed decimal number n to be converted to binary and hex n hexadecimal number n to be converted to binary. So these four are the pseudo instructions which we can use into our program that is assembly language program. Now coming to our actual machine instructions. So we have already studied into our previous chapter that machine instructions are th of three types starting with memory reference instructions which are AND, ADD, LDA, STA, BUN, BSA and ISZ. So you all are aware about the code corresponding hex code for these instructions and what these instructions perform. So you should remember all this memory reference instructions to write assembly language program. Similarly, we are having another type of instructions which we have already studied that is register reference instructions. So these all are register reference instructions like CLA, CLE, CMA, CME, etc. And along with their hex code. And if what is the instruction performs that is also briefed over here these instructions are to be marked up you need to remember all these instructions and the last category or type of instruction we are having is input output machine instruction which are INP, OUT, SKI, SKO, ION, IOF so corresponding hex code and what they are going to perform now let's see one simple assembly language program wherein let us try to understand this program you can see ORG100 that means it is a pseudo instruction which is not going to be executed by the computer. So ORG over here ORG100 means it indicates the assembler program that our program will start from the location 100. So this is our location of the memory that is 100 wherein our first instruction is stored. So you can see the first instruction is LDA SUB. Now you must be worried that what this SUB indicates. Now this SUB is a symbol 
which is replaced for some memory location because we are knowing that LDA instruction should have some operand. In that operand, we are mentioning it by means of symbol, but we'll have, we are having some address corresponding to this sub and which is located over here. So you can see sub and corresponding address is 107. So in this case, what we had done, instead of remembering this 107, we are writing sub over here. So as you can see that this sub is the symbol for address 107 and at address 107 we are having minus 23. DEC minus 23 means a pseudo instruction minus 23 will store the corresponding binary into this location 107. So next instruction at 101 is CMA means complement the accumulator. So the content stored at sub address is stored in accumulator and it is to be complemented. Later on that same thing is to be incremented by means of INC instruction means increment the content of accumulator. So the data which was there at address SUB is now complemented as well as it is incremented by 1. Now we are writing add min means add the content of accumulator to the address specified by the min symbol. So over here as you can see min is having some address 106 and at 106 we are having 83 data which is to be added to the content of accumulator. And next what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to store that is STA store the content of accumulator to the memory location specified by DIF. So DIF is having address 108 so we need to store the content of accumulator at 108. And we need to halt that is HLT halt the computer. So this will halt the computer and no further instruction would be executed and at last we are having end. So it states the assembler that program is ended. But the question arise what does this symbols do or what is the role of this symbols how we can use it. During the translation operation this symbols will be stored in some table in which we are terming it to be a symbol table. As you can see this min is stored over here in this table with its location, stub is stored in its location and dif is stored in its location. But now my question is what does this program indicates? What is this program? What will this program give us the output? So it's very obvious we have performed a subtraction operation. We have loaded subtrahend into our accumulator. We have complemented it. We have incremented it as per our formula for subtraction. A minus B is equals to A plus B complement plus 1. So we have complemented B then incremented it by 1 and my new end is added to this result. So we get the difference. So this is an assembly language program to subtract two numbers and you can see the symbols are stored into the symbol table. So this is a simple assembly language program. Now let's understand how this assembly language code is translated to binary. So let us say one sample code which I have already seen into the categories of the program. So this is one sample code. We are right now not concerned about what will be the output of this program but we are concerned how the translation process that this is the assembly code which you are seeing how it gets converted to binary. Now first of all this LDA instruction 004 would be translated to the corresponding hex code an intermediate form. So all this instruction which we are seeing over here LDA, ADD, STA, HLT needs to be translated to the hex code as an intermediate form and then later on this hex code can be easily converted to the binary. So let's see how. So as you can see the location 000 is having instruction LDA 004. So this LDA is having specific code but before I say this 
LDA is having two types, direct or indirect. But over here we have not mentioned anything, that means it will be having direct addressing. If it would be an indirect addressing, then I would be mentioned over here. So over here it is direct, so the code for LDA we are knowing it is 2. 2xxx for the direct addressing. So 2 is written over here and xxx is the address which is hexadecimal address only. So 004. So 2004 becomes our instruction. Same way add is 005. So the code for opcode for add is 1. So it is 1005. Then STA 006. The code for STA is 3. So it's 3006. HLT, the code for HLT is already, we are knowing that it is 7001, so it has been translated to 7001. Then the location 004 is having as usual first operand, that is 0053, then 005 is having the corresponding hex code and 006 is also having the corresponding hex code. So near need for translation for them. So as you can see, you have converted this particular assembly code to the hex code. And now it's, it is very easy to convert hex code to the binary form. Now you can see the two corresponding binaries 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, that means 0, 0, 0, 0, again 0, that is 0, 0, 0, 0, and 4, so it is 0, 1, double 0. So all these codes are translated to their corresponding binary. And this is what is actually the task of assembler. So, in our next session, we are going to discuss how this translation operation is carried out. So, this is what we had done on the paper, but how this computer will perform or assembler program will do, that we will be seeing into our next session.